Guys, welcome back to another video. So today I got a cool one for you guys. We're gonna take a look at the Intel Battle Mage B580 from ASRock. So let's talk about the Intel Battle Mage 580. This is the second generation of graphics cards from Intel. The first generation Intel graphics cards were targeted on 1080p gameplay and those just did okay. This generation on the other hand is targeting 1440p gameplay and they mentioned ray tracing. First thing you'll notice from the Steel Legend Edition is its stunning design. ASRock is known for their distinctive looks and bold design, and they definitely nailed it with this one. But we all know looks doesn't matter if it can't perform. So as far as design for this graphics card, it has a three fan layout. It also has a dual 8-pin connector to connect to your power supply. So for ports, you have three DisplayPort 2.1s and a HDMI 2.1. Port. This GPU clock speed is at 2800 MHz, which is a little bit faster than the 2670 reference Intel graphics card. For this year, they also did not skimp out a RAM. You get 12 gig DDR6 RAM, which is really helpful for more demanding games. So before putting this graphics card in the budget build, I wanted to test this graphics card out in my current computer. So the test computer we're going to use today has a AMD Ryzen 7 9700X. 32 gig of Corsair RAM and a 2 terabyte M.2 SSD, which is Gen 5. I really wanted to test out this GPU with this CPU so there would be no bottleneck. We will be testing this out with a 1440p monitor. So we have a 240 Hz LG OLED monitor to test this out with. And for those of you that are wondering if this graphics card can stream just like Nvidia and AMD, we will also be testing out a little bit of streaming. <clears throat> so come with me and we'll go test this graphics card out. So first game we're going to be playing is Dragon Age Veilguard. I put the settings to 1440p and medium settings. This was the only way I was going to get above 60 FPS. I tried ray tracing in this game and that just didn't work out. When I turned on ray tracing, I only got 20 FPS, which was basically unplayable. There was a little bit of stutters when playing Dragon Age, but overall, this was a good experience. Both FSR and Intel upscaling performs well. If I had to choose, I would use Intel upscaling as it has better image quality, but FSR gives a little better frame rates. Next is Ghost of Tsushima. Without upscaling, but with AMD frame generation, I'm able to play this game in medium or high preset and get above 60 frames. So overall, this is a good experience. Next, we tried Forza Horizon 5 with extreme settings and the Intel upscaling. When playing Forza Horizon 5, you get a lock of 80 FPS, which is totally, totally playable, and this is how I would play this game. Counter-Strike 2 in low settings. CS2 is a weird game because when playing Counter-Strike 2, the FPS jumps everywhere, but I felt no stuttering and playing CS2, I feel like this is more on your CPU anyways, but really good experience when playing CS2. Next game, we play Marvel. And I put this with no upscaling and low settings, and you barely get above 60 FPS. But this is understandable as Marvel is a super hard game to run, even in my current GPU, the 3080 Ti. It's really hard to max out in this game. Next, I tried Marvel with the Intel upscaling and frame generation, and we finally got over 80 FPS. So if I play this game with this GPU, I would use the Intel upscaling without frame generation just because this gives you a great balance of having good quality and just a little bit better FPS. Next is we played Path of Exile and this is where everything goes downhill. For some reason, I made sure I updated my settings, made sure I updated my graphic drivers, but this game stutters and it's so blurry. I tried everything, I tried rebooting my computer, but no matter what I did, um, upscaling or no upscaling, Path of Exile is just unplayable, so hopefully they fix this bug. But as of now, if your main game of Path is Path of Exile 2, um, 
it is not playable with this current graphics card. Last thing we tried is streaming Valorant. I did this in Mac settings and this was no big deal for this graphics card. And Valorant is not a GPU dependent game anyways. I feel like this is more on your CPU, but it's nice to see that you're able to stream with max settings, get above 240 FPS and still be okay. If you plan to play Valorant and stream at the same time, you can totally do this if you really wanted to. And let's get back to my desktop. So I played a bunch of games because I really just wanted to try out this graphics card. And to me, this probably is one of the most confusing graphics cards out there. So for the price, $250, definitely I would use this graphics card if I was only playing games that, that was in 1080p. There are some games that in 1440p it would work well, like obviously Valorant, CS2, Forza. Those games would work really well in 1440p just because they're not really hard to drive, especially like Valorant or like CS2. Some games like Veilguard and Ghost of Tsushima, those games you can kind of get away with 1440p. You'll have to use FSR or the Intel scaling, but don't expect to run this in max settings like Ultra or Extreme because it's just not going to get over 60 FPS. Like that's just a given right there. However, in 1080p, there might be a case where yeah, you could definitely run these games over 60 FPS, so so AAA games. But in 1440p, definitely not. And in 4K, I wouldn't even go there. I tried ray tracing, but when I did ray tracing, it just didn't work. I know they said this card can do ray tracing, but I wouldn't do it. And one last thing, this card is really buggy right now. Like, if you guys saw the Path of Exile, it was so blurry. Like, I don't know why, no matter what I did, I made sure I updated my graphics settings but it just looked like it wasn't working. That right there is a game that I really want to play, but if I had this graphics card, then I just wouldn't want to play it because of how it looks. Like it was so blurry. So I wouldn't do Path of Exile. If your main game is Path of Exile 2, I wouldn't get this graphics card for that. And one thing when also recording, I couldn't get recording to work while playing. It stuttered so much. It wasn't working. So what I had to do is I just did X264. So I made my CPU record instead, instead of a graphics card, which is kind of a bummer because it would be nice if the graphics card would just record. So it, would, it wouldn't be a hit to the CPU. However, it does work if you just really wanted to record and play at the same time. So yeah, you can use your CPU. Just know that if you're using your graphics card, I kept getting the graphics card overload message. AMD and Nvidia still better if you're gonna record. As far as streaming goes, I only streamed Valorant and that was a good experience. So if your main game is Valorant or maybe CS2, you could definitely stream on this. That's a good plus. So what do I think about this graphics card? Overall, for the price of $259 for this exact model, I think it's okay. If you're just getting into PC gaming, and your main game is like Valorant, Forza, like games that are easy to drive and you have a 1440p monitor, yes. However, if you're playing AAA games and that's like your main game, I wouldn't recommend this because it's so glitchy at the moment. I'll go back to the Path of Exile. It was barely working. And when the Veilguard, it was somewhat stuttering. And when I played Marvel Rivals earlier today, I couldn't even get to like my max FPS. Like even if my monitor was like only 144 hertz, it wouldn't even get there. I wouldn't buy this graphics card if that was your main game. And the thing is the new AMD graphics cards are just around the corner and we still haven't heard the Nvidia like 5060 or 5070. Those are gonna be a lot more expensive, but AMD and Nvidia are tried and true and you know there won't be any glitches on there. So if I were you, unless it's an absolute emergency, I would just hold on this graphics card for now and see what Nvidia and AMD has to offer on their lower end graphics card. But again, it's up to you. If Intel are able to fix their glitches, I think this would be a really good graphics card for like the budget build. For like PCs that are in the $500 to $700 range, I think this would be one of the graphics cards that you would put on there 
So I think you could pair this up with like an i3-12100 or like an AMD Ryzen 7600. I think this would be a really good pairing. Anyways, I hope you guys like this video. I'm still going to use this graphics card. I'm still going to make a budget build because it's just going to go to our guest room. But as for now, this won't be a replacement for any main computers at homes. It would just be a backup. I really like how it looks though. So an all white build would be really cool with it. And thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up, comment down below. Will you guys be getting this graphics card or are you guys going to wait for AMD and NVIDIA's announcement? Yeah, let me know in the comments. All right, that's it for me. See you guys. Bye.